Hello Year 3 and welcome to the start of our Stone Age topic. I know this isn't how we wanted to start the topic, but since we're here, I thought we'd go back and we'd see some of the things which Stone Age people would have used and some of the ways in which Stone Age people would have lived. To do this, we need our time travelling watch. I have already set it to 10,000 BC or BCE, 10,000 years before Jesus. Three, two, one. And here we are in the Stone Age. So let's go and find out what's over here. Well, here we are, year three, the Stone Age very chilly in the Stone Age though. There's a lot of snow and ice and so I think we need to go find some clothes. Once you've caught an animal, you're going to need to prepare its skin and for that you need a special tool called a scraper. This is a Stone Age scraper. It's a round tool that we can use to scrape off anything we don't want from the skin. So we're just left with the nice, clean cloth. Once your skin is scraped, and ready, you can cut it using flint knives. I have a very small flint knife here and it can cut through cloth, leather, skins without any problems. Once you have the right amount of skins, you're going to want to attach them together into clothes. And for that, we need some thread. Now, thread and string and rope in the Stone Age was made in a variety of ways. The easiest way would be to find some plants and pull out the plant fibers from those plants. And you end up with something like this. You can pull those plant fibers more and twist them, pull and twist, pull and twist, and you attach them to a stone with a hole in it. This is called a spindle whirl. And you pull it down, pull it down, and it turns it into thread. Using this thread and a needle made out of bone, you can sew through the skins together. But skins are very tough and often it's hard to pierce the skin with the needle. So that's why Stone Age people had these tools. They're called owls. You poke holes into the skin ahead of the needle with it. And so you've got a skin with lots of holes poked in it and then the needle can go in and out, in and out. The other way of getting things to tie bits together could be to cut very thin strips of leather or to take some of the bones and sinews from the animal that you've just harvested. So this is some sinew from a reindeer. There were lots of reindeers in the Stone Age. You take two stones smash it up and then you get lots and lots of small bits of sinew that you can pull out and use as thread. Now let's go and get some food. Follow me. Stone Age hunters would use spears made of sharpened wood. Then they would use spears made of sharpened wood which had been blackened in a fire to make it harder. After that they started using spears with stone tips. Before long, they had atals, which are like the devices you throw a dog ball with, which made spears go further. 
cattle hooks onto the back of a spear and you push it forward, allowing it to go almost twice as far. For example, from the pirate ship to the fuzzies. And finally, they developed the bow and arrow, which let them pick off their dinner from a distance. So that was hunting, but there was also gathering. People could gather roots from the ground. People could gather berries from bushes. People could gather fruits from trees. Now we've got a nice lot of food for our lunch. Let's load up our travois. A travois is like a sled where you can pull and drag along all the things you need to carry. Time to go back to the camp. This looks like a good spot for a camp. Let's get to work. Stone Age people would have used what was in the local area to build their shelters from. For example, if they lived near the sea and hunted a lot of whales, they might have used whale bones. Most Stone Age shelters would probably have been built from sticks arranged in a teepee formation to make a tent with animal skins draped over it to keep the people inside dry. More animal skins would have kept the floor nice and warm and then final finishing touches with favourite animal skins, antlers or other decorations on the top. Perfect. Even though we sometimes call them cavemen, you might wonder why they chose to live in tents instead of caves. Well, they did use caves. They used caves for special occasions, for ceremonies, for religion, worshipping different spirits of nature. And sometimes they decorated those caves with artworks. They would draw paintings on the walls of scenes from their lives of hunting and living in the Stone Age. Sometimes those would be with paint, Sometimes those would be with charcoal. Charcoal is a type of burnt wood which can draw quite well on rocks. But why didn't cavemen live in caves? Well, a lot of the time the caves were already taken. Ah! we're going to need to find a place to keep all that food that we collected earlier. Towards the start of the Stone Age, people would keep their food in bowls carved out of wood. And that's fine, but we can do better. Stone Age people then started to weave sticks and branches together, especially plants like willow which can make baskets, which are really good for storing food in. It let them carry a lot more at a time as well. But then they became outdated and there was a new technology that was even better. Pottery. Stone Age people eventually towards the end of the Stone Age found clay and they made very simple bowls out of it in which they could keep their food and store it and eat from. Stone Age people also could carve horns from animals into drinking glasses. Cheers. You could cook food by hanging it over a fire on a stick, or you could heat up a stone and put it in a container of water, maybe a leather bag or a hole. The hot stone would heat up the water and then any food you put in there would be boiled. Tasty. Stone Age people use tools made from bone, antlers, wood, and yes, stone. But where did they get these stone tools from? One word. Napping. 
Not that kind of napping. But napping where you make tools. So, last time we looked at rocks, we looked at slate. And slate was a type of rock which broke off into layers. And another type of rock which does this, which is very useful, is flint. So the flint rocks here break off into layers. If you hit them with a hammer stone or a hammer, you can nap them. And sometimes tiny shards break off. These are very sharp and are very useful for making small cuts on things. But after enough time, either with a stone or maybe the hammer is made from an antler of an animal, like one of these ones. This antler is a hammer for bigger stones. And this antler is a hammer for finer work. Once you've broken off enough bits, you can shape your tool to whatever you need it to be. It could be a circle scraper. It could be this tool, which is the most useful tool of the Stone Age. It's called a hand axe and it can be used as a knife, it can be used to chop down trees or plants like an axe, it can be used to stab things if you need to. Very useful. Or it could be one of these down here, a spearhead that attaches to a spear, two more smaller spearheads. These ones actually are from the Stone Age. Or perhaps a tool which has a wooden component so these are knife blades and you would stick them onto a stick to make a knife like this, a bit like the awl. It would be put into a stick to make the handle and the stick obviously has decomposed over the many thousands of years since it was made but the stone blade is still here and still as sharp as ever. Something else which you could make was weapons. So you could stick your stone into a hole in a stick and it could make quite a handy Stone Age axe. This actually is a Stone Age axe blade. Again, the handle is modern, it's a replica. It is a model of what it would have looked like, but the actual axe head was an axe head in the Stone Age in this axe. You could also have more decorated ones. The handle here has got all sorts of patterns on it. And if you look at the work that was on remote school, you will have seen these patterns already. Come a bit closer and have a look at these. These are Stone Age arrowheads. So these would have been attached to a wooden shaft. Probably uh, you would carve with a tool, you'd carve a little notch in the shaft, a little um, hole, put the arrowhead into it, and then you would glue it in place with beeswax mixed with charcoal, um, which is, makes a sticky glue, and then you would wrap some string around to keep it on place, and then you have a Stone Age arrow ready to go into a reindeer or tomorrow's dinner. In the Stone Age, just like today, people like to decorate their homes with ornaments and knickknacks, just pieces of decoration that weren't particularly useful but were nice to look at. Perhaps that was in the form of jewellery, like a tooth of an animal on a piece of thread that they could wear, or coloured beads from a stream, coloured stones that they particularly enjoyed threaded onto a necklace. They also might have carved small totems like this bear, perhaps to celebrate a time or a memory when something special happened, like a bear hunt. Something that was very special in the Stone Age were things made from amber. Amber is a tree sap, the tree resin, the inside part of the tree, inside the tree trunk, a kind of a liquid and it dries into this clear uh, yellowy substance and you can chip it and carve it and polish it into different shapes and here we have a small amber bear
Amber is very pretty and it lasts for a very long time and it was one of the main trading goods of people in the Stone Age. In the Stone Age, they enjoyed playing lots of music. Now, some of this might have been in shells filled with seeds, which make rather good shakers. Some of this might have been with percussion, like drums. This is a replica, so again, a model of a Stone Age drum. It's got a wooden outside, and then this covering is animal hide. So this is animal skin, which has been dried, and strips of the animal skin tied together at the back to make it nice and tight. And again, it has a beater with animal skin on it, So quite useful to use for ceremonies. Also, um, they could have made pipes. Maybe they carved out bones and could blow through them, a bit like a recorder. And perhaps they could make some um, other wind instruments using clay. Music was definitely an important part of life for Stone Age people. In the Stone Age, people had to move from a winter camp to a summer camp and back again every six months because they needed to follow the migrating herds of animals to have enough food. Now walking is one way they could have done it, pulling their travois behind them, their sled, but another way would be to sail down a river. To sail down a river, you first need to build a boat and to build a boat in the Stone Age, you need to chop down a tree. This looks like a good one. We'll start here. Build your very own Stone Age dugout canoe. Step one, find a nice thick tree trunk. Step two, chop it down using your axe. Step three, strip off all those pesky branches. Step four, cut the tree trunk in half. Step five, hollow out the tree trunk. Step six, enjoy your new canoe. Step seven, try not to fall in. Hunting for fish was also a good way to get food. Spear fishing normally took place with wooden spears and then eventually with spears which had flint heads. As time developed, so did fishing techniques. And those flint heads, one of which we have here, nice and sharp, which was attached to a wooden shaft and thrust into the water, were replaced with these bone or antler harpoon heads. The little spines on this harpoon head meant that it would stay in the fish and when you pulled back the spear, the fish would come with you. Fish were not only very good to eat for food, but they had lots of little bones which were really useful to make into tools like needles. Stone Age people eventually started using fishing rods with hooks made out of bone. Looks like we'll have some dinner tonight. Woo! 